All right there, hello there everyone. It is I, Soulsor17 here. It has been a good week, I think, since I made a last video. Let me double check. I think it's been a week. Yes, it has just, it has been a week. Oh my God, I'm sorry everyone. Um, schoolwork has been draining my motivation to make videos a little bit. Schoolwork, I mean, you know, so I'm sorry. So part four is finally here. And, well, let's just say there's going to be a lot of things going on. Um, I may be going back to making Deku videos just to get some of them out of the way. Just a few of them. And then, like, some Asta ones. I may be making more Asta videos then, too. Like, I may be keep working on some. You know, keep making them. It's just... I am... Well... You know, I just... There's a lot I can do with some characters with Asta's like maybe there's like a boundary I can do, so I'm trying to make sure I stay in some lanes of that, I guess, with Asta. I'll probably think of some more crazy ideas for him anyway, sooner or later. Um There's gonna be some new Deku there's only gonna be like probably two or three Deku ideas I'm making. Um Asta ones I think I'll make some more. So, yeah. Also, I have just recently got into what we're reading a manga, Chainsaw Man. I read everything. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I know there's a like part two coming out, but I, I just, I want to make a video of that could become a Chainsaw Man. There's going to be a lot of twists in that one. So, yeah. Um, a lot of twists and turns. It's gonna be not the same as the manga. It's gonna take place after part one. Like, 40 years. That's all I'm gonna say. So, yeah. So, last time we left off in this series was, uh, you know, Asuna finding out about Goro. You know. So, we're gonna go into the dungeon now. And... This A rank dungeon, which oof, Goro is not the, he's not at that point where he can take it, and this is gonna be the difficult part, but also the fun part for me. Um, I'm also gonna be bringing in something to give him a little bit of a boost. That's all I'm gonna say. You guys can figure that out if you want to. But anyways, I may make I may make another video after this one. And upload that tomorrow, maybe? I don't know. Tomorrow night. So, like, it's when I'm at work. Probably most likely when I'm sleeping. So, it'll be in Saturday morning. I don't know. I have just some schoolwork I gotta do, so I'm gonna try to not rush this, but just, you know, go. <sighs> you know, into it. So, anyways. Oh, so, Ghost of Tsushima. I'm loving the game. Yeah. Yeah. You had some plans for that, for something. Just want to say that as a hint. But anyways, let's go into what if Naruto was the reincarnation of Goro and had solo leveling. Part 4. So, um, fans on because my mom's watching TV downstairs. Yeah, yeah. So my apologies. So, alright. So, as... Okay. <laughs> Oopsie. So, as Asuna and Naruto plus the Shadow Clones are walking along, Oracle comes in and just says, Hey, Naruto, do you think you need to, I don't know, send some... How can I say? Some decoys ahead? Because, well, your basic level is... He was weak. Yeah, I know. I'm only rank 49. Is an A rank dungeon. It's probably in the 70s or 60s. I could probably die here. So, yeah, seems right about right. And basically, he kind of makes a whiff, you know, basically, not whiff. I mean, he goes to the wall of the dungeon, takes one step, takes one step, basically, brings his feet together, takes another step, brings his feet together, all the way to he reaches the you know, other side of the wall. He goes, alright, so there's going to be four rows of me. That means if I want to go 
all the way straight down, I could probably make at least 50 Shadow Clones. Since I know some Jutsus, um, I think Wind and Earth and Water? Mm, no, it might have been Wind and Lightning. Ah, whatever. So, he the, he basically does hand signs and says, multi shadow Clone Jutsu! And about 50 Shadow Clones are summoned. He was like, alright guys, I know what you guys are going to think. Why us? Well, do you want me to die? I mean, if I die, you all die too, so... As they all just nod their heads, they're like, yeah, that's true. So he just says, okay, so go forward, find any monsters, kill them. Use whatever you can. And if I know about... A lot of you are going to die. I'll just make more until I'm at good ranking. I mean, good level to take them on by myself. Along with some of you guys help. So, you know, thanks guys. They all say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, all the Shadow Clones start running along. Asuna goes like, uh, 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 how many did you made? He was like, about 50. Along with nothing, them, all of them have their own, like, chakra sources, so I give them a lot so they can use Jutsus. So, basically, they're at the entrance, and they're just sitting down, basically, as Naruto kind of just waiting. He can see about in two seconds, like, two minutes later, two of his Shadow Clones get dispersed, and he goes like, <sighs> Red enemies. Let's see how my Shadow Clones are doing, you know, in a few minutes. So, after a while, about five more of his Shadow Clones disperse, but they took down the monster. It was a lizard monster, basically. And, how can I say this? It was like a salamander monster. And so, since my mom turned off the TV, that means she's going to bed, so I don't need my fan on. <laughs> Thank God. So... Since that happened, I am going to have to say, since he was level 49, they were in the red, he went up about 5 to 6 levels. Yes, so I'm going to have to, you know, put the points in. So, excuse me. Oh, yeah, I even forgot to tell you guys, I wrote down the martial arts... That, you know, Goro knows, so I don't have to look them up now. Yeah, okay. So, he is now level 55. His strength, agility, sense, vital, and intelligence all at 103. And he's at 54, I mean, 254 points. Which, Asuna is like, uh, you, how? He goes, eh. Got lucky, I guess. <laughs> I mean, they had to use some jutsus. I think one was... Well, lightning style? Um, lightning chain? Hmm, or lightning dog. Eh, it's kind of hard to remember since... I technically... Well, focus... I do learn these jutsus. I only learn the basic ones. I need to train a lot more with them. Ugh, I'll probably just invent some of my own then. So, Asana's just like, uh, okay. So, basically, after Goro and Asana are talking, he does ask her, so, what do you like? You know, personality-wise, in the real world. Well, I mean, not from my world, from yours. She just doesn't want to say nothing. She just says, it's really nothing special. Just a normal girl. Which girl just looks at her like, uh-huh, sure, normal girl. <laughs> Which she goes, what is that supposed to mean? He was like, look, I'm just saying, you don't act like a normal girl. You act like somebody who's, I don't know, the way you were talking, it seems like <sighs> you know what you're doing. Or you have experience of, well, strategy-wise, I can say, like leadership skills. 
experience is everything, right? So, tell me the truth, Asana. And Asana just sighs and just says, okay, fine. Who I am is, my name is Asana. Her last name, I'm, I'm not going to say it, nor do I know it, but she just says that and because Goro would never understand it. He was like, okay, um, what's so special about your name? He goes, all I remember, this is me just saying this, not her, um, she, her family is rich and that her mom and dad are like the people who made, like, you know, on the business who made the game, you know, who had the people, the guy made the game, so, you know, yeah, so basically she just says, well, this game is made by one of my father's employee, employer, you know, employees, basically, and <laughs> I decided to come in and experiment for myself because I have nothing to do when I'm at home by myself. Sometimes. And Gore just goes, ah, figures. He goes, huh? He was like, no offense. Kind of obvious this was your first RPG. You know, this was not RPG for you. First one. But this virtual reality MMO, MMO? Yeah. Didn't know for sure. But now I do. So, how many vegans have you played? She just kind of blushes and says, first one actually. Really? First one, Asuna? Wow, you pick one. Hell of a game to put put yourself in. She looks down, embarrassing, and, like, and he just starts laughing. He does pat her on the head after, you know, he gets up and... Yeah, he gets up because they were, like, right across from each other and just pats her on the head. He's like, eh, don't worry. We're gonna survive this. I promise. So, yes, there are monsters are being killed, and each one is being killed and that he is going up by five but i will say how many times so yeah okay so what happens is she then asks okay you might know anything else he was like boyfriend she was no huh well, rich girl, so, back in my world, there were sometimes rich people had their, when they had, like, companies, they had, like, arranged marriages. Uh, please don't tell me that actually happened to you. Her face goes sad, because, and it goes, like, ah, awesome, ah. Because he was standing up when he was saying that, and he does sit next to her. And he was like, let me guess, one of those creep, you know, scumbags your mom doesn't know because she thinks he was suitable for you? She nods. He was like, oh, um, this is, okay. You know what? I just want to finish the game as fast, fast as possible so I can legit find this guy and kick his ass, basically. Yes, I am cursing now because it's... I just want to do it more so I can just speak freely. Sorry to anyone who, you know, doesn't like it, but yeah. But anyway, so Asuna looks at Goro and Shah. He was like, look, where I come from, <laughs> both worlds, it doesn't matter if it's a freaking, I mean, if I was forced into marriage, because he was like stumbled over his words, but like, basically, if I was forced into marriage, <laughs> I wouldn't give a crap. I really won't. It's like, you're gonna... I'm gonna marry someone I love, or I can marry one at all. That's the deal. If my parents chose something for me, just because I was rich? <laughs> yeah, no. You can't force love, and you can't marry someone out of for money. It's annoying, it's stupid, and it's wrong. So, how about that? Alright, if I get out of here with you, I'll, you know, beat him up to a bloody pulp. Make sure he can't walk right, you know, for you. Then go to your mom and say, no, she's not going to marry that jerk over there. She's going to marry whoever she wants to. 
And if you don't like it, too effing bad because I'm gonna, well, make sure she does. And he says it with a confidence, you know, confident look in his eyes and a smile. And also then just laughs at it. He goes, uh, what's so funny? He goes, she just says, just now you look like you're serious. He was like, I am. Come on. I thought I was being cool. And then Oracle just says, yeah, no. You just look like some anime protagonist. And he's like, uh. first time I try to act cool and be nice. She does say, sorry, sorry. So, do you think we're ready to go now? And War just looks at his level. He was like, yeah, we're ready to go. I'm a high enough level now. Just let me put in some points. So, I'm gonna do that, but while they were talking, he leveled up, you know, he got his leveled up, but it went up by 5, because, well, he found out, he doesn't know how high the monster's level are, because the system never showed it. So, you know, he just knows he's gonna level up. So basically, he went up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So times five times eight is forty. He went up forty times, and you know the scores will go up too. So give me all a minute. Okay, so here's the thing. I did. Well. Uh, I did it even with 5 times 8, got 40, so plus, so basically his level is 95. The monsters are in the orange now, so he's at least close to him by level, but his stats now, because I put in 40 for each stat. Hold on, I want to double check that because something was not right. Okay. So yeah, so basically, his stats now are all 183. Alright. He has points since I put in 40. I have, he has still now 104 left. There are multiple floors, people. There's more than one. I'm making it. So, I mean, actually more than two. So it's like, one, two, three, four. So basically... Goro basically says, all right, I think we're good enough. Let's go. So, they go through the dungeon. Naruto was, like, taking care of the first floor until, well, actually, all his clones already took care of the first floor. But he wants to double check it. So, he has multiple, he says, multi-shot kunjutsu. As they all go down, you know, he tells them all to go down to their levels. Check to see how many they are. And, well, there is only three. Fourth level being the boss. So, basically, that's all. The ones who are taking care of the monsters, yeah. On the second and third floor, they're not being defeated so easily. But they're having a, a little bit more easier time dealing with them in groups now. So, by the time Goro gets down there. To the to the dun to the final boss floor, he has already checked the, all the floors. There's no like items there or anything for him to grab. Which Asuna says they should be. He goes like, "This is different from Sao. This is my dungeon. There's never any items. <laughs> Besides, the corpses are still here. Remember, and we just been looting them." And she goes, uh, "Yeah." Which yes. Uh, so, what are some of these monsters? You know, are well, one of them is a salamander, so their scales, and basically they're uh, well, some they breathe fire. So the fire, the the sac, basically there's a certain organ that breathe, you know, that helps them breathe fire. So yeah, and then there were some lizardmen. And further down, like, on the second floor, there was, like, a little bit of some wolves. Then on the, f basically, third, it was rock golems. Well, yeah, rock golems, which are, like, the lowest ones, like, the weaker ones. So, basically, they just loot the monsters and they get to the third floor. Boss area. Like, you know, the 
stairwell going down. And, well, for some reason, he just says, Okay, so I have leveled up from the Shadow Clones going down all the way to the second and the third floor, and then we just loot the corpses. My, well, Shadow Clones made me level it up about, okay, so since I stopped leveling up five times, going up by one five times, you know, each level, like each time a monster was slain, I'm only doing it now three, so, and there was only on the second floor, there was 12 monsters, and then on the third floor, though there was 12 monsters, I mean, there was only 10 monsters, so 12 plus 10 equals, he then says, okay, so, Two, three, one, two, twenty-two. Huh. I went up twenty. I leveled up twenty-two times. Well, actually, that basically, but three points. I mean, three levels actually. So three times twenty-two. Yes, I am making this like. Overpowered right away because, well, <laughs> oh, there's something that's gonna happen to Goro that this is gonna not make it broken. But he needs this, he really does. But before he even, like, you know, before I even do this, he noticed something. He goes, Class change? The heck? Okay, what's going on? Like, when did I get this class change? Which, Oracle just said, uh, you know, waking up from her nap, you know that? Huh. Okay, what's that class change? Oh, yeah, it just means you'll gain a class, maybe more than one, since you're, well, the system you have now is totally different from before. So, you may get three or four, who knows? I'm gonna go back to my nap. Wake me up when you're about to take on the boss. Night, night, she just says, and you know, falls asleep, so, okay, so, okay, I'm gonna do my, the math here, sorry for all this math, <laughs> okay, so, did the math, so basically he is leveled up each time, three times, you know, so, in points wise, Messed up. I did three times. Oof. Okay. I meant to put down six times 22. So I just had to do another three. Hold on. Okay. So I did it right now. So I basically did six times 22 plus 104. So yeah. So basically now he's level 169. And well. Uh, okay. Bug. As I was saying, 169 in level. He is now in strength and everything else. 249. And in just points, he has 236. Are you thinking? Since the Shadow Clones are not doing any of those skills with the critical strength or anything else, they are not being leveled, you know, up that much. They're not leveling that fast. So yes, um they're relying not to use much mana. They also use his mana pool. So, yeah. But anyways. So. Here's the thing. They have been using the blades, though. And I will have... I would say right about now, he should get Blade Master. Just because he's been using the daggers and the sword more. So... If you guys don't think so, uh, let me know, but I'm putting down Blade Master. Level 1. Okay. So. Um, I am kind of... This monster, I'm thinking of it 
How can I say this? This monster is a mixture. You know the Hydra from Greek mythology where Hercules kept on cutting off its head, just sprouts out two more? Yeah, I'm mixing that with a kind of, you'll see. But this thing is has intelligence too, so it'll be really smart. What's gonna happen is, well, he is going to get two skills right here and right now to make up for me not giving him. Yes, he is still getting the same skills as Izuku and Sunjin Wu. So if you guys know what's gonna happen, great. Good for you guys. If you guys know, don't know, I mean. Okay, yes, this is gonna be very interesting. So, he looks at Asuna. He sees the clones right behind him. He just says, so, you guys ready to protect her? Or do you guys want the spell so that way I can make some more? They just say, that's, got, that's fine with us. He goes, well, you guys were at my previous levels, so, yeah, the spell. One at a time, though. As they do. And so, he says, multi shot clone Dutsu. And so, that happens. He says, alright, let's go. So, when they go down, Asuna is amazed by the scenery. She's seen, well, this cave, it's basically a cave, you know, area. So, it has beautiful jewels all around it. But it's very weird. It's like... She doesn't know. Like These crystals seem to have mana. You know... Well, actually, Izuku would know mana. Well, not Izuku. I mean, Goro. Mana. Because, well... He can feel the energy coming off of them. Asuna is just amazed by this. But... For some weird reason, they hear something crawling. There was a... Kind of a... How can I say this? There was a light coming from one end of the tunnel, I mean, of the cave, and it just goes like down. But Goro notices that there's a shadow that moved past it, and he was like, Asuna, get ready. He goes, What do you mean? He goes, We're not alone here. So he gets out his twin daggers, well, not his twin daggers, his Fenrir dagger and his Kitsune dagger. He was like, crap, crap. He's looking up. He doesn't see nothing, but he hears something. They hear a breathing. And then, as all of a sudden, like, Goro, he just, the clone grabs Asuna. You sprint to run out of the air while the other one does it too. As Naruto jumps forward using his chakra. Well, no, no, we yeah, got Goro. And then lands, he spins around. And he sees when the, you know, when the smoke is around the monster. It's basically just... He goes, basically it's like, it was like camouflage. He's like, oh great. We got a effing chameleon. Great. Alright, you have a golden lizard. Time to effing die. As he runs towards it, using sprint and chakra... But immediately starts spinning in the motion where Levi would basically and cuts off the lizard's head. And he was like, huh. Well, that was a piece of cake. I thought this was a strong monster. Bosses usually are. I guess me just putting my point as you know, the monster did slump over, as then it just comes back up. It's on all fours again, but then all of a sudden it just Sprouts out more heads. Like two more heads. He was like, Ugh. A Hydra. Why is it a Hydra? The ones in this game has the maximum heads. But with the system, it literally gives me an actual Hydra. Ugh. As he does tell his clones to you know protect Asuna at all costs. As they nod. And Naruto basically says, Alright then. <laughs> because the, when he's looking at the monster now, it's not basically, you know, camouflage no more. He's like, Alright, ugly. Bring it. And so, this battle is basically just Naruto 
trying to, well, actually, Goro just trying to get to the body of the monster so he can get in close and start hitting it, basically. And just, but he has to cut off the heads, which makes more. It's getting a pain in the butt for him. He was like, damn it, come on, just let me get through. As he does kick the monster's head, and he is noticing the monster's weakening, but it's like, the more heads it gets, the harder it is to even hit until, like, he's not paying attention. Because he's focusing on one going his other one way. As then one of the heads just smack him to the side. So then flying into the crystals. He was like, alright. <laughs> that hurt. <sighs> he looks at his health bar. He was like, okay. This monster's in the red. And that took me down to half health. Darn it. I took a health potion. As he's a, you know, he's about to, you know, get one out, but, or, you know, use the restore, but before he can even do that, all of a sudden, the monster shoots, well, the lizard hydra shoots out elemental attacks, basically, at him. Earth and water. Basically, hitting him, which brings him down. His health now is, like, basically, slowly disappearing. Asuna seeing this, and the clones go like, crap, if he dies, we're dead. Yeah, Asuna will be dead and trapped here. You can't let her die, guys. So, they rushed in, trying to get past the monster, but the monster, you know, hits one of the clones, dispersing it, as another one just tries to, kicks the body, try to send it flying, but the other one uses tank top blow. And... Well, it does significantly wound it, but not enough, as I thought, because the Hydra then bites down the clone, poofing it, and the and the you know the other one just that did the tank top below gets slammed into the ground, dispersing. Asuna seeing this as the you know the lizard Hydra is walking over to Izuku, as she like Asuna shaking, she goes, "No, I can't let him die." Basically. Because she doesn't want to see someone die. So she screams out. She gets out her rape, you know, basically her sword, rapier, basically, and runs at the monster, trying to go at fast speed, you know, strike and power. You know, speed and power basically strikes. But before, as one of the heads looks at her and uses bloodlust on her, and she's petrified. She can't move, and there's a stat buff, you know, stat debuff. As it then focuses on her because it's going after the weakest link. As Naruto just suddenly hears the, the monster saying, <laughs> A fresh meal to eat. I've been hungry for a while. I should really enjoy ripping her to shreds. As Naruto basically hearing this, his... His his health was at a good, uh, uh, like, 50? When hearing this, well, no, it was 50, no. The elemental attacks brought him back to, like, 50. But while, it, you know, this was happening, it was near 1. It's going down to 2, but, you know, it was at 2, but then all of a sudden, when it was about to hit, it hit 1, it stops. Oracle... You know, hearing this, like, she, like, Naruto couldn't hear Oracle even speak. She was, like, say, Naruto, get up! Come on! Or just Goro. Naruto, Goro. I'm, I, I really just, just keep saying Goro, but... She's saying, Goro, come on, get up! Asuna's in danger! And, you know, when he hearing this because of, you know, the Fenrir's necklace allows him to talk to animals, he hears this, and the health meter stops. It stops going down at one. He just thinks of what he said to her. I like said, you know, he she said, "You better protect me." He goes, "Fine, fine, I will. I won't let him, I won't let nothing bad happen to you." And then he says, "That's right. I promise." He, you know, he just starts basically gripping, um, whatever dirt is in his hand, basically making a fist. He says, I promised her I would protect her so she can live. 
finish this game. I promised my friends I wouldn't die here. Basically, as he's getting up, and this is catching the attention of this lizard Hydra. It's basically feeling something for the first time. As something's having to Goro. Something's basically coming off of his hands. Going up to his arms with spikes coming off of it. And all the way up to his shoulders with, you know, spikes. If you don't know what it is, I don't want to spoil it because I saw an image of it. If you guys do know what it is, it's Goro's... Actually, yeah, you know what? No, F it, F it. It's Goro's Monster's Transformation. It's a final form, I think, but to me, this this form is his, like, I'm making this, like, in this version, this is his true final form. He has the look of the monster on his arm, but his whole entire body is still, well, human, but his eyes are red now. And he's just looking at the monster with this, well, happening to his arms. He says, you are gonna pay for what you, well, we're about to do to her. As he just walked in, and for some weird reason, his health came back, not fully, but his health came back to a good 50 which, it was, you know, his revival. You know. His gun, like, hey, let me... Yeah, revival near death skill. But this also awoke in his monster transformation. Which he never thought he could because... But he's only focusing on the monster, you know, right in front of him. As all of a sudden, he blitzes the monster with everything he has. Chakra, sprint skill, physical strength... And in one motion, all you just hear him thinking, well, actually, all you can hear him say, whirlwind, iron, cutting, fist. And basically, and critical strike. And punches the monster right in the side, because, actually, yeah, right at its side, basically. And it's basically, and basically, it just blows apart, sending a shockwave of air pressure everywhere. As he just says, <laughs> "Take that, you ugly bastard! I told you I'll kill you." <sighs> but you know, before you know, he could even walk over to Austin and look. He goes on to a knee. He goes, I got to take a potion. So he does stick out his hand and then just start, you know, into his, you know, basically his inventory and just start drinking his potions. One, like about two, no, about three. And so when he looks at his stats, they significantly increased. Like, Three times increased. Yes. Yes, because this is... And then he hears the title. We all know what it was going to be. We all know I was going to have to bring back... Like, his title that he had. Well, actually... I already had a King of Monsters... But this title is, well, True Awakening. Basically. What this does is gives him a, well, a significantly good amount of regen. Like, he can regenerate now. And, well, because of this, if he's anywhere past 50% of health, 
his regen will go will regenerate every one point zero 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 one second by fifty points. So imagine that. <laughs> but anyways, gotta do math. Okay, so everything one up. So all his strength and vital basically stats went up to seven forty seven. Did he level up? No, he was close, but not, but not that you know close. But still. So, what he got from the monster now, after Asuna ran over to him, was basically he got a rain. This rain allows him to basically. How can I say this? Okay, so this rain allows him to resist elemental damage. It reduces it by 50%. Alright, we'll call it the. Yeah, why not Hydra Ring? I did not know how to spell it, so... Okay, also, he does... Basically, when Asuna gets there, she goes, What the... Is the Hydra Ring he gets, along with a new weapon? Yeah, we're just going to go with Blades here, so... I would say he gets the Hydra Hydra Sword. Or, but for right now, if you guys can come up with the better name for it, it's an actual just sword, like an an SAO version sword, you could say. But if you guys can come up with a better name for it, please let me know, cause yeah. He just says, wow, new weapon, cool, new, and new equipment, <laughs> I really am going to need this. So, Asuna does ask him, very soon, okay, he goes, fine, fine, just took a couple of healing potions. <laughs> ah, man, true awakening. Huh? I mean, uh, basically, he says hom because he looks at the Hydra kind of like corpse as there's two items glowing so what the so he walks over to it and yes you can say camouflage is not the same thing as a vanish or stealth skill but I'm saying this is the equivalent to a game ver version of it so it's stealth you know he, you know, he picks up the rune. It's called Stealth. And, well. And then he has the skill Bloodlust. Well, another rune Bloodlust. So he crushes both of the stones and he gets the skills. He was like, huh. I was like, if. Monsters have specific skills or people too. I get to tape them. All right, good to know. Good to know. And well, all of a sudden the whole entire area starts to oh, disappear. Now he still has the jacket on that I just didn't write it down because that jacket is gonna be here for long. Cause that's like the. You know, the SAO, the SAO items will disappear from his inventory. But but not from the actual dungeons he goes into. Those will stay. So, yeah. Just the SAO system itself, he can't take them because they're all data. Even though the system gave him the jacket, it was copying off of a jacket from the, from the SAO. So, it was you know, converted into data. It's converted its data basically. 
But yeah, he he can still wear it because he's in the game. So after that's all done, you know, he's basically looking around. He's like, well, we're back. So let's get back into town. How long have we been gone anyways? Oracle says, uh, about four hours, maybe five. And he's like, uh, <laughs> maybe five? He checks it, he like says, oh, no, only two. Well, see you later, Asuna. And then go back into town, take a rest. She just says, you sure? You don't need me to help you? He's like, I'm fine, fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll be fine. See ya. So he just starts walking away, basically, from her. And then he looks at Oracle and goes like, So, we have to go into the hell. You know. She nods and says, Yeah, we have to get the class upgrades tomorrow. It may take a while, so be prepared. He's like, I will. Hey, why do I even have this rune stone? It's the return one. I have a... I've only had like two of these. Two to three, basically. She goes, yep, yeah, that's to help you get out of the dungeon if you want to leave it. He's like, uh, seriously? Wow. That kind of sucks I didn't know about it until now. Um, hold on, everyone. Alright, so as I was saying. So, she goes, eh, I thought you knew. It's like, really, Oracle? So she just laughs at that. And he just kind of just chuckles. He was like, alright, alright. I'll try again, you know, basically into the little job class tomorrow. All right. So she nods. And so, so what's happening with Asuna and Kirito is the whole tire them teaming up to f solve a case. But it's also when they team up anyways, but Asuna's not. So clingy to Kirito. She's worried about Naruto the whole entire well, Goro the whole entire time. Basically, but after resting up in in the middle of the night, he goes back into the woods. I think it is on floor fifty or seventy they're on now. Let me go back and check where they're on. Oh no, no, no. No, no, not not yet, not yet. Um yeah, it doesn't matter what floor you're on right now because I wanna try to get to the Liz part, so I mean Elizabeth part. So Yeah. So basically what Naruto does though, he checks out before he, you know, activates the class you know the class upgrade. I mean the class, you know, skills and everything. This is what he does. He basically does this. He goes into the forge. And he sees it. He sees now he can forge these weapons. From all the items he has gathered. He can forge up to many, many weapons now. But there is a star system saying 1 through 10. 10 being his max on, the, on learning how to forge. So, he says, after this class upgrade, this class says, I'll do that. So, so basically, is he, he, uh, the system says, would you like to go into the class system now? I mean, you know, the class, change class. He goes like, yes. It's in the woods, so the gate opens, it's purple. And he goes like, all right, you ready to do this, Oracle? She goes, mm-hmm, got everything? He goes, yeah, let's go. So he heads in. And, well, he's not going to get no, like, levels, so... He's good on what he has. So when he goes in there, he's just running and striking every monster down, basically. Like, every, like, night monster down. He's destroying them. Ripping them, not to shreds, but kind of destroying them. So... I am going to just say, he he does, the same thing happens with him and Sanjin Wu, basically, with the same knights, assassin knights, everything. So, let's just say, 
He just says, these guys are being a pain in my butt. All right, it doesn't matter. Let's just... Because I don't have him... I'm having him doing the whole entire secret dungeon... I mean, the secret dun death right dungeon when he's going... The, 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 you know, the second month. This is still him just trying to get into the tuning exams, getting ready for it. So, yeah. So, basically... He does, you know, take down the monsters. So basically he has the, I'll just say after I write them down. Hold on. Okay, so basically he gives the High Knight's chest plate, um, 7% physical damage. The C Archer's gloves, prevents hand injuries. Basically the B Knight's gauntlets, the High Knight's, the High, not Knight, High Magician's Ring, and the Assassin's Boots, you know, B, B, you know, he has those, he goes, uh, well, at least they're not see, you know, they can't see them, that's great, <laughs> cause, I'm gonna keep, I'm keeping these parts invisible, because there's, because I'm just like, making this happen, because he goes, huh, I wonder why no one will be able to see them. So he goes into the, you know, equipment, you know, you know, basically being equipped. He presses onto the actual, like, equipment and stuff. And it, but then all of a sudden he kind of presses, like, a switch button. So it switches up to the actual SAO, I mean, not the SAO, the actual, so the systems equipment. He was like, huh. So then he you know, switches it up and he goes like, "So this is the SAO equipment." Um, huh. Interesting. Hmm. Wait, maybe that's why I have the blacksmith. So he goes over to the blacksmith and then he sees it. Equipment, forge. He goes. So this is gonna help me make physical clothing that are going to. Yes. So. So the Hydra ring is not, like, I can have more than one ring because of the system now. Okay, okay. Or I could have switched it. But it does say now I, I can't put two on it. So, yeah, okay. All right. So after, you know, he's in front of the door. He feels this ominous presence. And he goes, huh. wonder what this is. Oracle does tell him, Goro, just be safe, all right? He goes, yeah, yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. And so he opens up the door and all this air pressure is coming out from, you know, the area. And so he was like, okay, what the F is this? Feeling fear? Oh, something else. Excitement. <laughs> all right. So he just walks forward and, oh. He sees the Red Knight. The Red Knight Egress. He's like, well then, hello there. So, you're the one who's guarding this area? <laughs> well, this ain't gonna be easy for me, nor for you. So, what do you want to do first? Hand-to-hand -hand combat or swords? Or not daggers? Your choice, buddy. And Egress does have the sword out. He's like, all right. So he takes out the daggers. And he's like, let's do this. And they just run at each other. Goro's using his daggers and blocking the blade. As then he kicks, you know, Egris to the side, send him slide a little bit. But then he switches out to, you know, to bring out the Hydra's sword. As then he just notices an effect on it. Water effect. Makes enemies movement you know, slow. 5% chance. Alright, that ain't bad, but still not good. And so he just runs at him, you know, Igris slashing, but Igris, you know, does block. But from the force of his attack, Igris, you know, does go set flying, but then he has to basically stab the sword to stop himself. And for some real reason, Goro can tell Igris is shot. He was like, huh. 
Don't be. I'm not even going at full speed because I want to enjoy this. But, unfortunately for you, I don't have no time to. So, I'm sorry. He gets into a stance. He then, all of a sudden, starting to pour in chakra. As the sword starts to glow, basically more water spurn, you know, spinning around it. As he uses sprint and chakra and his physical capability, you know, physical speed, to disappear in a split second. And basically, he just slashes, but not slashes, he basically puts the sword right into Igris' eye, destroying the helmet, sending a whole bunch of water pressure, sending it straight forward, but also knees Igris in the chest, bending it. Killing Igris. He does say sorry to him. Hope he can forgive him. This ain't a proper death for you. But then he... Well... He sees a whole bunch of things happening. You know, like... Well, no, he doesn't see a whole bunch of things happening. He doesn't see nothing happening. But he does notice. He does get another runes stone. And a new item. So, give me a minute. Well, equipment item, basically. Okay, yep, yeah, so S Red Knight Helmet and then Dominator's Touch. So after he gets those items, he he you know, after crushing the stone he gets it, he goes like, Huh, I wonder what's gonna happen and then he says, Prepare for you know, fight. You know, prepare for waves of enemies. Survive as long as we can. As Goro just goes, Huh? Really? Survive? Uh alright. This ain't gonna be easy. Oracle just says, be prepared for anything. He's like, I will. And so, what happens is, multiple waves of enemies are coming through, but it's way more than Sun Jin Wu had to handle. Because the system said, hmm, I need to bring out more portals. So, there's a lot more enemies. As Goro just says, <laughs> alright then, let's do this. So, he has his sword out. He has a dagger in his other hand. And all he just does is run forward. He's striking down every single knight that's getting in his way. Critical strike. But then, like, you know, one knight does hit him. Like, caught him off guard because they had a big sledgehammer. They slam into a wall. He drops his dagger. But then he uses Dominator Touch to bring it back to him. You know, after seeing it. And basically, he just then throws the knife, in which he gets a new skill, knife, you know, knife throw, or throw knife, I think. Yeah, dagger throw. So, he gets that. Um, after hitting the one that, you know, hit him, it was in eye, though, so... Gets vital strike now. He was like, the fudge? Okay, whatever. So yeah, because I'm just giving these like, because it happens. I uh, I want them. I want him to happen. You know, have it. So yeah, so he gets that, and um, just checking something here. Wait a minute. Okay, so after this happens, he does go back, he does get up and runs, and all of a sudden, he using the whirlwind iron cutting fist and going through the enemies real quick, just to get his dagger as he grabs it and rips it out of the night and, you know, destroying it. And just says, alright, looks like I got no choice. So... He does do, does some hand signs. He says, Multi Shadow Jutsu! And there's multiple of him. I said, Alright, guys. He just says, 20 of you. Use, you know, using the martial arts. You know, water stream, rock smashing fist. And the other ones use the whirlwind, iron cutting fist. As they nod. Basically, he only sends out like 40. 
So he's 20 of them are using the water stream rock smashing fist, and another 20 just using whirlwind iron cutting fist. As basically, they're just wailing on these guys. Some of them are like a couple of them are using tank top you know, moves. He turns, he's just a stealth skill because, well, he needs to, you know, get onto a higher plane as he does. As all of a sudden, mages are using, well, detection magic on him. He's like, oh, come on! He jumps off, he goes, wind style, wind bullet! As it shoots one of the mages and destroying them, that tucks down some of the, you know, some of the the knights and he was like huh so these guys are the ones who's so they were just being controlled all right <laughs> all right boys you know what to do tear through them make sure there's nothing left but you know revel well actually scrap metal basically as all the c clones just saying yeah basically just running in naruto runs in with your know, sword and dagger and the other one's just using fists so halfway, this takes a good long while. These, the clones are being dispersed slowly, but three of them they take down. Ten more come in, and it's like, so it takes the same amount of time it does take for Sun Jin Wu until he defeats them all. But he does say. Secret cross, secret technique, combination move. Cross Fane Dragon Slayer Fist! As he slams the ground, as a whole bunch of, sh like, the whole entire ground breaks, sending multiple rocks, debris, flying everywhere, destroying everything in its way, until there's only him left. This end of throne, and Egress. He does half and puff and goes like, <laughs> Yeah, take that, you uh, um, puppets. Oh man, I'm tired. <laughs> so he does like, fall down and just laughs about it. And Oracle is just like, uh, 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 How did you do that. He goes, I don't know. I'm pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I'm tired. So and then like then suddenly something pops up. He says, Job class. Or you know, basically his title now. Okay, so here's the thing. I am make I am combining the Shadow Necromancer with something else. The Shadow Monarch with something else. The slight ability. It's going to be like a side effect to, you know, his transformation ability. His Kitsune form, basically. Which, I need to put down that. Um, Kitsune's transformation. So, hold on. Okay, so. He does see the titles. I mean, he's seen the title. As he goes, huh? The points I made. It's the exact same amount. Which is a lot. Like the same amount as some Jin Woo. But it's adding extra from using Shadow Clones. For using martial arts. For using Jutsus. 3 million. 10 million. 20,000. How many times he has used it. And speed wise. So yeah. And how long. Well, actually how long he lasted for too. And he's like. Huh, wow. That's amazing. That's a lot of points right. Which Oracle nods. So. It says Necromancer. It's given the same description. The one whose. Well. Path has a blood. And death, wherever he goes, he uses these, the bodies as his army, blah, 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 yada, 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 necromancer. And then it goes to 
Shadow Monarch. But something happens. Something starts to appear. Something strange. Because I like this idea. I did like the idea. Like, giving beast, you know, some beast monsters basically to look human kind of way. Like, a. Because, you know, Naruto's somewhat immortal, so. Well, Goro's somewhat immortal, so why not have this way happen? So basically, he then says, Kitsune Shadow Monarch. And then, like, the title changes to be the High and Monarch, he says. The one who has been through death and back. Kicked out from his clan and home. Learned the ways of the darkness within its one, everyone and oneself. To make an army. To prove everyone wrong. Then the whole entire thing about the Shadow Monarch. So, yeah. Um, the whole entire why um, I thought it would be a good idea is because then I can have some SAO monsters, bosses, turn into his army. So, yeah. So, hold on. Okay. So, here's the thing. Um, I gave some... I basically went back into YouTube's, you know, Went back onto YouTube to check the comments on what was one person saying. Um, here's the thing. Someone said as an apex hunter slash monster. Basically, it this allows him to switch between any one of them. He can choose. Basically, he can switch between the class. So, basically, I can only think of a few things with apex hunter. Basically, this would allow him to... Track enemies um, and hide hidden presence. Basically, it's I, I'm not giving it no levels, but there's a howling screech from monster and then an attack boost. Basically, the howling screech will basically makes your enemies fear, and the how basically the attack boost gives you a two times multiplier. So yeah. For about thirty minutes, but still, it's good enough. Um, I'm gonna think. I maybe need to think of more. So yeah. But anyways, and so um, he got the title of. I just put in. I just put this as a, you know one of his abilities and skills, but it was really just supposed to be a title, but it's still, Kitsune Shadow Monarch. So, but then he did get the title. The one who overcomes adversity. And, well, and then, like, all of a sudden, he sees his, you know, class. He says, all right, that's two. Then all of a sudden, something's, like, happening. There's, like, a glow. And then, for some reason, this one, this area for his, how can I say this? This area for a class, it's different. The class was like, there was like nothing there. It was like blank. But then this one has like a gold box. And then all of a sudden he sees it's still go going. Like, it's still choosing the next class. It's martial artists. And he was like, okay, I know I'm a martial artist. And then all of a sudden it changes to God of Martial Arts. He's like, Okay, great, but then that title's changing. It was like, what the, what's happening? What's going on? Yes, I'm making this, I'm making this as a reference. And then all of a sudden the, ch the title changes to One Punch Man. Is huh? It says then, this is for the one who can fight any enemy, any person, to a standstill. But truly, you can finish the fight at one punch. He's the one who has lost the excitement in a fight. 
who can basically fight any opponent while holding back, but can always finish everything in one punch. He is the god of martial arts. He is the god of fighting. And he was like, okay. So basically, the hunter slash monster saying, the one who tracks and the one who... Who basically the one who tracks its prey and then goes at it to finish off for the kill, basically. Somewhere along those lines. I did not think of this right away. I just forgot to think of like you know, write it down. But so we all know now. So Goro says eh, one punch, man. <laughs> uh, Even in death, you're still bugging the little crap out of me. <laughs> uh I mean, it does. The title just says, "All physical damage is reduced significantly, only taking one point of damage." It's like, uh, uh -huh. oh, that stinks. All right, thanks. But this does say it only when this title is on. It's like, well, I want to have a challenge, so I'll use this. That there are no abilities to it. It doesn't give me any physical increase. Huh. But it does work with my one punch skill. So, yeah, alright, we're good. So basically then, everything starts to, you know, disappear and such. Oh, no, actually, a portal opens, and then he walks out of it. He kind of cracks his neck and everything else. And then he gets a message from Asuna. It's been about five hours. Not five hours, it's been like three. And Masha says, hey, um, Goro, do you mind meeting up real quick? He's like, fine. You know, he just takes the message back and says, fine, we'll meet up. And so, when they do, she just... You know, she's kind of wearing, she's wearing earrings and such, and she looks happy. He just says, so, what's up? She goes, nothing much. You? Eh, got some new classes. She was really, was, yeah, necromancer. Shadow Monarch, but truly, but, oh, wait, no, 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 we, 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 we backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. I forgot something. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. So, after getting his classes, he basically starts hearing wail and, you know, like, the voices. And... All of a sudden, he hears the soldiers, all the knights, and it says, choose, you know, choose command to raise soldiers. He goes, huh. So he starts thinking of a command, and for some reason, he reads, he remembers reading something about how someone said this word. You know, how it said, you know, he basically heard it from a friend of talking about a D&D &D session, saying how he told his army to arise from the grave. And he always liked the word arise. Anyway, so he says, arise. As then all of a sudden, all the soldiers starts to arise, basically. Rise up from the dead and he, he can hold them all. He was like, oh man, this is awesome. And then, you know, he goes, I mean, he sees Egress. He goes over to Egress, basically. And, he, you know, he says, arise. Doesn't work. So he thinks, he sees the throne. He does have Egress. He goes, ah, do you really want to just keep watching a, a throne with no cane? Leaving you to waste here? Not having no fights? No fun? Man. <laughs> It kind of sucks, don't you think? Come on, man. How about you just come with me? I'll show you a world beyond your wildest imagination. More than you can ever imagine. And serve by me as your new king. Will you please? Just arise. As Egress comes up and it says, choose a name. He just says, Egress. That is simple. And Egress then, you know, you know, basically goes on his knee, one of his knees and bows to him. He goes like, huh, I hope we, well, can get along just fine, Egress. Just fine. 
as he basically taps Icarus's shoulder. I mean, not taps, as he places his hand on Icarus's shoulder as he nods. And so, they leave then. Okay, and then the whole entire thing with Asuna. Yeah. They go back into the shed. They go on to the shell. He leaves. And so, what happens is, he just tells her, Kitsune Shadow Monarch. Basically, I can take any monster, I think from here, or from my dungeons, as my own. And put them into my army. Army. Basically, I can hold about... I forgot to put them down. Hold on. I basically just tells her how he has like 197 shadows. And he could hold, hold up to 792 shadows. And now, he has this title called Apex Predator... Apex Hunter slash Predator Monster. Basically. He thinks... There's a skill tree of it. And he's going to have to unlock them. Uh, he says, let me double check. And he does. He has to unlock these. Like He doesn't know what they are. He has to use the tracker's you know ability real, you know for a couple of times to unlock it he has to use these certain skills so you guys can let me know what they're gonna be and i will write them down i want to see what you guys will think so yeah and then he says also i became the martial artist i have i became martial artist i already had that as a title but then it went to martial art god and she goes, okay, what else? And then it says, One Punch Man. She goes, what's so wrong with that? Because he said with an annoyed look. He was like, it reminds me of a guy that I can never beat. He always finished everything in one punch. So, I have a move called One Punch. And this reminds me of him. So, yeah, kind of annoying because he's always in my life still. But I don't mind it. I do mind it. It's a love, it's like a, you know, thing I have now. She was like, okay. She's like, yeah. So, anyways. <sighs> what about you? She just says, well, me and Kirito been on a little quest thing. Hunting down a bump case. We finished it. And, well, you know, everything went well. Um, I went to visit a friend on floor 58 or something, I believe. Hold on. Okay, it was on floor 48. So he was like, oh, okay. Huh. I think I'll go take a look at that. So, uh, she open right now? She's like, mm-hmm. You might want to go tomorrow, so... He goes, nah, I'll go over there right now. Anyways. Uh, it's good catch up with Asuna. Sorry, I just want to check it out, see if I can get a better weapon. <laughs> I mean, well... <laughs> Also, get some tips on blacksmithing. So, yeah. Catch you later. As he just leaves, go to the teleport gate, but Asuna, just look at Naruto, smiling. She's happy that he's getting stronger, and she does say to herself, she never wants to tell anyone about this, keeping that a secret. So, yeah. But she does say, but I wish she could just spend more time talking to me instead of running away. And then she realized, wait, am I getting mad? No, 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 I, I can't. <laughs> He's trying to get out of the game like everyone else and try to get stronger and... Um, you know, she's freaking out a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. So, he gets over to floor 48. And, well... I... And basically, he just realized that I never asked where it was. So, he... Quickly messages Asuna, she then like tells him the location and he goes to the town. When he gets there, he gets there when Kirito is about to slash, you know, his like Elizabeth's sword, her masterpiece. Before he breaks it, he goes like, Yo, Kirito, I wouldn't do that if I were you. He's like, Huh? Uh, who are Remember me? Goro? <laughs> it's been a while, huh man? He's like, Yeah. Dude, it's been like forever. He goes, what do you mean? He was like, uh, what it looks like to me, you're about to break this uh, weak sword. Like, legit. Uh, which Elizabeth says, what do you mean weak sword? He was like, I mean, I can already tell this one's going to break. Plus, as G Goro takes care of the sword and holds it, he's like, yeah. 
This sword's a way too sturdy. Sorry about that. Uh, um, she was Elizabeth. He was like, all right, Elizabeth. Sorry, it's just, this is a good sword. I'm not gonna lie. It's just gonna break compared to Kirito's. So you're gonna need strong material for a better sword, Kirito. He was like, uh, I'm trying to get a sword to match this. He was like, oh, all right. So you guys know a place for any new materials? Kind of looking for some too. She goes, why? You need a new sword? He's like, uh, more like forging. So what do you mean? He was like, uh, explain later. Explain later. So, do you mind helping me out? I'll help you out. You help me out. Kirito, he says, and Kirito, well, basically, is, well, I don't know no places, and they, she just says, um, 457, I think? Let me double check. Alright, so, it's 455. On the western front, something. So, basically, he was like, alright, I think me and Kirito can do this by ourselves. As then, she just says, well, you need a well, expert blacksmith. And besides, I'm also a mace wielder. And Goro just says, eh, doesn't matter to me. The more the merrier, I always say. So, anyways, I'm gonna go, you know, wait for you guys at the, well, teleport. You know, teleporter. So, yeah, as basically they leave, I mean, not he, as no, Goro leave, Kirito and Liz are just looking at each other. Because, how much do you know about him? As Kirito says, not much. All I know is, He's a really good fighter, and plus he's wicked strong. He's the one who took down the floor boss by himself. The very first one. And the second, and the third, and the fourth. But then all of a sudden stopped. And she goes, wait, what? Him? As he, Kirito nods, which Liz is like, uh, uh, wow, that's amazing. He's, yeah, I know. Anyways, grab what you need and let's go. And so they get to floor 55, they're crossing the snowy mountain, everything kind of goes similar, but Naruto, Wani, Goro is just like, ugh, it's so warm, I mean, this is not even that bad. As, she goes, what do you mean? He's like, well, this ain't that bad. Hmm, hold up. As he does go into his equipment, he does look through the, you know, what in a blast of equipment area. He sees the, well, wool jacket. Basically, he he has, he can do it. There's a 99% chance of, you know, success. And so, he just kind of just does it and, boom, he has the jacket. So, I mean, he makes two to three. And he gives one to, I mean, Kirito gives one to Liz. He gives, you know, that same coat. Jacket, whatever. As in, um, Goro just gives one to Kirito, what he made. When Kirito puts it on, he's like, wow, this is really warm. He's like, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, on me. It's so light. It doesn't get in your way. Yeah. Anyways, come on, let's go. So they get up to, you know, the dragons and the, where the dragon is. Same thing happens. So, what happens is, though, same thing with Kirito saving Liz, but Naruto runs, jumps to the actual wall, and just starts running down it. And basically, how it's going, he runs faster than Kirito and Liz has fallen. So when they get, like, near, he just jumps, catches them, lands on the wall, and basically jumps off of it. And lands on the, well, on the ground like it was nothing. He basically puts them down. And they're like, Kirito's like, uh, how did you? He goes, I'm higher level than you guys. Whatever. So, yeah. Basically, uh, that's it. You know, um, everything goes somewhat similar. It's just that. Naruto not gonna help out. He's just gonna relax here. He's thinking, and well, he can't think of what happened with uh, the rare material of the dragon that Liz was talking about. So 
he just says he's going to ponder on this a little bit more. Or Cola does say she's going to look around. He nods. So what happens is everyone, they fall asleep. Oracle, you know, having the same thing. Liz and Kirito having their moment together. And well, when Goro wakes up, Kirito is doing the exact same thing. Everything goes somewhat similar to canon. It's just, I'm giving Kirito his moment to impress Liz. So, that happens. And they ride the giraffe, you know, the exact same thing happens. The only difference is, Naruto does what Kirito does, but without no extra boost, because he's just running all the way up. And then when, you know, they're up in the sky and, well, falling, the dragon's still there, as then he just says, Hey, dragon! Well, no, he says, Hey, dragon! Take this! He basically uses chakra in his foot, and it's fire. Basically, he goes, What the? Whatever. He goes, Fire kick! No, not fire kick. He goes, Rise of the sun dragon! I don't know. I don't know why I just thought of it. Rise... Rising of the Sun Dragon. And the fire takes a form of a dragon and he kicks it, basically killing it because it bursts right through the body of the dragon. Kirito and Austin, I mean, not Kirito and Austin, not Kirito and Liz get safely. And then, uh, well, when they, you know, they land far away for him to try this, he was like, all right, <sighs> arise. Because the body's still there. And the dragon just, you know, Becomes his shadow. He starts patting it. He goes like. <laughs> nice. But then the dragon is starting to. Form into. You know. Into a humanoid. A half. You know. Creature. It has fox ears and tails. And human form. But it also keeps its wings. It's a fox dragon. You know. It's a fox dragon now. And he goes, huh, I wonder, can you talk? And the dragon says, of course I can. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, maybe I should name you... Hmm. Uh, God, I cannot think of a dragon name, he says. <laughs> eh, why not? Uh, Spyro? No, no, no. Um... Rin. And, well, the running just shrugs, says that's a good name. Alright, let's go with that. He's like, cool. So, Rin it is then. And he says, Get, hop into my shadow, alright? Can't let the other guys know. And he nods, and so he does. So, Kirito and Liz come and find him, ask if he's okay, you know, what happened. He says, eh, kill the dragon. I've been new. Let's go. As you know, as they leave and such, and it's just, they're just wondering where's, how did he do it? You know, he doesn't get like no, like he did get like experience, but it wasn't enough to level him up. He's almost there, but mm, he need like two more points to level up, but you know, not, not leveled up yet. He didn't get nothing from the dragon, um, besides a few shards, crystals from his body. So yeah. And so, Kirito gets his sword. You know, his new sword, Asuna, comes in. You know, Goro is, well, in the back, looking at Liz's weapon. So, when Liz sees him and Asuna and Kirito are talking, she kind of thinks of, you know, this is the guy she was talking about. And then she notices Goro. She goes, Goro! And she runs over and he goes... What are you doing? He goes, eh, checking out some weapons. I mean, well, not weapons. More like hammers for blacksmithing. I helped out them, you know, Kirito and Liz. Beth, I guess. She says, just call me Liz. He goes, all right, Liz. He just says, um, about the tools. I'm going to need to forge. But then he does think, well, I mean, I just automatically craft the equipment. But I do have to forge them, the weapons. So... Yeah, by hand. And she goes, well, that's good. I mean, thank you for helping Liz and, you know, Kirito. 
It's no problem, no problem. <laughs> I'm going to be on the front line soon, so, you know, I have to go and help out my fellow members. She kind of laughs at that, he just smiles, and lives and realizes. Hasa doesn't know this, but she may be liking Naruto, I mean, not Naruto, well, Goro. And Kirito been looking at Liz the whole entire time. So, Asta then kind of grabs his hand and brings over, saying, I wanted to talk to you about something, but it might not be the best time now. He goes, no, tell me now. He goes, well, after that, you know, where we were at, He's like, yeah, last night, uh, that night she said, I got a notification. Sorry, thought I heard something. She said it was on all blue screen saying, item, well, I have retrieved an item. He's like, okay, tell me about it. She goes, it was a necklace, a silver and orange crystal in the middle of the necklace basically saying that this will allow me to travel to a place with the person I care about the most I will be with him by his side basically and this will never leave me this will never leave me I don't get what that meant do you he was no but hopefully I can find out what it is, all right? She goes, all right, thank you. He goes, no problem. Sorry about my system. It's kind of, you know, it does its own stuff sometimes. <laughs> she nods, and she goes, really, girl, you're the best. He goes, that's no problem. <laughs> Basically, and so Liz looks at, you know, Asana, she goes, so... How do you two know each other? He was like, huh? First boss run? <laughs> Saved her and Kirito's butts. She told me her name, asking why I, well, became known as the baiter. The beater and the cheater. So, ba beater. <laughs> she was like, I heard about that. You were gone for off the front lines for so long, people thought you gave up. He was nah. <laughs> Trying to become a blacksmith so that way I'm on the road, I don't have to pay for so much money. You know what I mean? She goes, yeah, I know what you mean. She's like, so, uh, about the hammers? Which one works best for it? So, Liz then talks about it, and he goes like, and basically writes down the name of the hammers and where he can find them. He goes, thanks. See you around, Liz. Come on, Asuna. And they leave. Kirito says bye to Liz, too, and he says, I'll come by more often. And I'll buy whatever weapon whenever I visit. Alright? He smiles at her and Liz blushes. And she goes, alright, Kirito. Bye. And they leave. So, Goro asks Kirito and Asuna, so, what are you guys going to do? You know, they said, well, me and Asuna, this is Kirito talking, saying that we're going to be, we're teaming up for a while and we're going to, well, go up, uh, take on, try to find the new dungeon. I mean, not the new dungeon, the new boss room. Well, you, he was like, eh, don't know. I'll probably sleep in for a while and try to find these, oh, these equipment I need to forge. So, <laughs> yeah. In which, us not just asking. I mean, if you're not busy, you can always come with us. He was like, I'll, you know. Just send me a detail where it is of the, well, the dungeon for the boss. And I'll come as soon as I can, alright? I promise. She nods and he goes, you better. If you don't, I swear, I will hunt you down and make sure you, to drag you there. It's like, <laughs> scary. I mean, I like it, but. <laughs> you just have to ask nicely. Sword print. I mean, you know. Sword and Flash. They really have to come up with a better name for that, I think. Mm. How how we just call you the... I don't know. The Princess in White. Sounds like a better name. It's even cuter. 
And we're just us faces, right? And she's trying so hard not to grab her sword and try to hit him. Because she knows what was going to happen. He just laughs. But no one really noticed about... If you're wondering, does anybody notice about Goro's you know, hands all the way up to his shoulders? No. Um, the jacket's covering it. And it's basically making it look like it's not. If you're saying, oh, it's spi- it should be spiking out. Yes, it should, but it's not. Which is surprising for him. So, it's permanently on him. So, it's like... He's also kind of used this again, you to to make the illusion. So, she does ask him finally. So, about your... He goes, yeah, um, doing something for that. <laughs> he kind of like bring, whispers in her ear saying, Genjutsu. She goes, oh, okay, gotcha. He's like, all right. So, uh, see you guys. I'll see you on the floor. What floor? 57, 56, maybe 55? She just said... Um, so, basically, I'm just saying, like, it's in between the 50 range. 50 to 60 floor. So... Yeah, anyways. So he gets to the end on that floor where the where the next part will take place on. And that will be all, everyone. I hope you guys have a nice night, day, wherever you are. And uh, bye, everyone.